Hey everyone, it's Agent Meade from Delta Tactical. In this video, I'm going to go over the Anderson Mission XP farm. Uh, as I was asked how to do it solo, I've been struggling whether or not I wanted to publish this particular YouTube video. I'm going to leave out of the discussion the right or wrong of utilizing or going after game exploits. That's beyond the scope of this discussion. It was directly asked of me, how can you do this as a solo player? So that's what this video is all about. First and foremost, what is the exploit? First, let's talk about the mechanics that you're exploiting in this particular case to gain XP. In the Anderson mission, if you choose not to complete the objective, there are unlimited spawns. So that's point one. Point two is, the spawns occur at the door you're closest to. So we're going to position ourselves in a place where we're only close to one door. So we're focusing all spawns into one doorway. Then we're going to use the oxidizer and utilize the chest piece talent where there's a 25% chance that any kill will reset the cooldowns of your skills. So those are the three things we're taking advantage of. For the build itself, you need to have six skill tiers. In this particular case, we're using the technician class. We've actually got seven. One goes to waste, but that's how we're going to run it because we want the artificer hive. As has been recommended, the glory days talent is perfect nearsighted where you've got 100% stability at the cost of minus 35% optimal range. If this is the firearm that you have as your primary, when you switch to the oxidizer, you get benefit of that talent while you're aiming the oxidizer. So the oxidizer does not move a whole lot. Secondary is irrelevant. What I've been doing is putting in whatever I had that I wanted to increase the proficiency on. This is an experiment. I don't know if I can increase the proficiency on a level 30 weapon. As far as the build itself, it's really about gear pieces and then certain talents. So it doesn't truly matter what you place where, as long as you have three pieces of Empress, two pieces of Hannah Yu, and one piece of Wyvern. That's sort of the optimal configuration of uh, brand set bonuses. In my case, I'm running the Empress Mask with skill haste and skill damage with a 12% skill haste mod. By running the three piece, we get skill health, skill damage, and skill efficiency. And I've discussed this here before. What is skill efficiency and it's all skill attributes so it's skill damage skill haste skill duration skill health repair skills and status effects so that 10 percent skill efficiency is giving you 10 percent of all of those for the backpack we're using hannah you in this particular case and again for the two piece you've got skill haste and skill damage we want the skill damage haste is is important but it's less important than the damage Skill damage and skill haste, and you can see this piece is not perfectly optimized yet, but I'm also running a 12% skill haste mod. The talent is tech support, where skill kills increase total skill damage by 25% for 20 seconds. So the oxidizer will be buffing itself while it's doing damage, so this is an important talent to have. For the chest piece, we're running the wyvern. Again, it gives us 10% skill damage. Skill damage, skill haste, and a skill haste mod. And the talent is skilled. Skill kills have a 25% chance to reset skill cooldowns. Those two talents are a must. In terms of what you put where, it's irrelevant. As long as you have that combination of three Empress, two Hanny U, and one Wyvern. Empress gloves, skill haste, skill damage. Hanny U holster, skill haste, and skill damage. And Empress knees with skill damage and skill haste. That's the build itself. We're running the Artificer Hive and the Chem Launcher, the Oxidizer. As far as the mods that I've got on this, I've got the one, plus one ammo and 4.1% damage because that's what I happen to have. That's all I have. I actually had to craft that one to put it in here. I did not have a damage mod. Your weapons truly are irrelevant, especially doing this solo. We're mostly, I will end up probably firing a few shots from my assault rifle, but most, if not all, of this is going to be done with the oxidizer. So that's the bill in a nutshell. And as far as the stats, if you wish to see it, 
Uh, you can fast forward through this to see what the crit chance, crit damage numbers are. Again, this is based on the weapon itself, which is more or less irrelevant. Similarly with the armor, uh, I'm probably going to take some damage at some point, but again, if I do this correctly, it will be nullified by the fact that they're dying before they clear the door or shortly after they clear the door. More importantly is the oxidizer itself. It is a tier 6 chem launcher. Cooldown is 10.5 seconds. Occasionally you will run into problems with your, your cooldown where you're not... You're, I have run into problems with the cooldowns because I am not paying attention to how many rounds I have left in it and have burned it right through to empty. Once you start killing the spawns in the doorway, it's really truly about just managing the recovery rate of the, uh, of, of the, the rounds for the, for the oxidizer itself. And the cloud damage is 190.1k for damage itself. So I'm actually farming for some RNK stuff, so that's what I've got set. Um, the gameplay is going to follow. The most important part of the gameplay is the initial how do you get into position, how do you manage the crowds. Uh, the rest of it is quite boring, even as a person running it. It's just about firing the cam launcher over and over and over, and then over some more at the doorway until the timer elapses. I've done this two ways where I've actually run into the cloud with about 15 seconds to spare and grabbed what I could before I die uh, to respawn, or I've just let the timer run out, gone back in, killed the you know, three or four or five uh, NPCs that are in the doorway, and then gone and recollected the, uh, the loot. Either way works. I've run this solo, two, three, and four. Um, I've run it on a couple of different difficulties. You run into problems at a certain point due to either scaling from the number of people in the party or from the difficulty. An optimal group size seems to be two. Three, you have to manage it a lot more carefully. Four can become problematic. Uh, similarly, uh, on with two party members or solo, hard is no or normal is easy. Hard is doable. Challenging and above starts to become much more problematic. So my recommendation, especially if you're going to run this solo for the first time, is do it on normal Agent, in either no solo or with two players. With two players, you can use the second person to manage the ads as you're getting into position to manage the doorway. So again, I'm making sure that I've got the glory days selected as my active. I'm going to switch to the chem launcher. Better not be another false alarm. And then just fire a couple and wait and see if that manages to take care of all of them. It usually does, but not always. Don't make the mistake I did the first time of running into the red cloud. Red is bad. It will kill you and kill you very, very rapidly. And you can see at this point, despite the number that I fired, I still have seven rounds available because the kills that I got in the hallway were resetting the Contact cooldown. Task forces are on location and expecting you. When you're going to play this, like you're going to play it from here. Be we're going to come agent. back here in just a second. So we're at five. I'm actually going to pause and let the cooldown go back to at least seven. I'm going to pre-fire at the doorway. They're going to spawn over approximately here through this doorway. I'm going to pre-fire two or three into this corridor and then trip the, uh, the computer and then run back to uh, where we need to be in position for the next uh, group of spawns. So one there, one there, and one there. Jammer detected nearby. Oh, shit. 
They're using the Conley modifier. We're lucky our comms are still working. You'll need to take out those EMPs. Stay out of their line of sight. And this is where things get tricky, because uh, that's a shitty spawn for them to manage. Agent, you'll need to use the console to disable the EMPs. So I'm going to get a couple at that doorway. I'm going to go back and get a couple off at the ads that are down there. And I'm going to go back into position and then basically just back and forth, keeping an eye on how many rounds you have left. And now at this point, there's no ads behind me, so it's just about focusing the doorway. And I think I got one that escaped the door. So we'll see if they start to flank. And once the kills start stacking up, you can see how quickly your rounds come back. And that's basically it. One advice if you're keyboard and mouse, at this point, I'm going to go into my... Actually, I'm not just yet. I'm going to go into my settings for controls and switch this to no so that I don't have to continuously hold down that button. Watch out for the bag. You can see it on the bottom right side of the screen. Uh, I have inadvertently fired into that and killed myself. So the, where I am at this point, per, uh, spot in this desk is where you want to be. And then the rest of this is for the next 21 minutes, I'm just going to keep an eye on how many chem rounds that I have and just keep firing at the doorway. I don't know if you caught the scrolling across the top, but a level 30 tsunami apparently will uh, gain proficiency while we're doing this. As far as where to aim on the door, I haven't found the sweet spot yet. I'm aiming at the bottom left corner of the doorway. That seems to be somewhere around there seems to be the sweet spot. But if someone has figured out where there is a sweet spot, if you can leave a comment, that would certainly help everyone else out. At this point, I'm going to end the commentary because, again, truly, at the, at the, at the end of this, it's just about getting into position and then keeping an eye on your rounds. The rest of this play gameplay is you don't need to sit here and watch it. So for those of you that have stuck around at this point, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you've enjoyed the commentary. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. So there's three proficiency caches on the ground, and my inventory has 20 in it. So that was 23 levels that I just went up. I'm just going to burn through these three. And then go collect my loot. Now you'll notice that it's... I'm not doing anything, it's just a single click and then a click again to release, so my advice is after you finish this, for your own sake, uh, go back in and change the settings back to uh, toggle uh, for your hold to, aim, sorry, hold to aim, set that to yes, uh, or if you're doing it with a gamepad, it would be this one right here. Uh, that way it's, it's in my case, hold right most aim, and as soon as I release it, 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 uh, it, I stop aiming down sights. All I'm doing at this point is I'm going to clear the, uh, the hallway, radio. and then go it. pick up whatever's on the ground, yeah. and then go back to Washington. Alarm. Hostiles at the perimeter! Just let him come. So don't stand in the red cloud of stupid, as one of my clan mates would say. Black Tusk forces are on location and expecting you. This feels like a trap. 
Be careful, Agent. And at this point, we're just heading back to Washington, and that will be the end of this video. So if you've made it all the way to here, thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you're not already a member. Uh, please like, comment, and share the video, and we'll see you in the next video.